Hello everybody and welcome to Watchful Eye Studio. Today we're going to be doing a painting video. We're going to be painting some ancient Chinese repeating crossbowmen. We're going to be using a pretty simple palette today, as you can see. Most of the colors we're going to be working with are going to be out of the Vallejo range. A couple Games Workshop colors. And our first step is painting the flesh. We're going to be using 341 flesh base. We want to make sure we're adding a little bit of water to our paint. We're going to start adding that onto the fleshy areas, in this case the face and then the hands. Do a couple coats if need be. Don't worry about mistakes because we're going to clean up as we go. Once that's done, we're going to be switching to German camouflage black is a nice really really dark brownish black color which is ideal in my opinion for doing things like hair uh, maybe even some some buffed or tarnished black leather the thing I like about it is is that the brown gives a little bit of a warm hint uh, makes it feel alive rather than a stark black color so I think it's perfect for things like hair, especially for Asians. I give it a little bit of wash at the end, um, just to give it some depth. Um, but realistically, almost no highlight is required, especially if you're trying to just get some miniatures on the tabletop. And realistically, that's my goal, is I like tabletop miniatures. I'm not a competition painter, and I'll never try to be one. Um, I want my miniatures to look good on the tabletop. So we're going to do the boots, the hair, move on, work on chocolate brown. And in this case, we're going to be doing the trousers or pants in this darkish, dark brown, chocolate brown color. And realistically, you can use any colors that you want um, that satisfy you know the theme or idea of your army. Um, I like to stick with uh, earthy tones, especially things like levy troops. And in this case, the repeating crossbowmen, which were also, which were often citizen soldiers. Um, the repeating crossbowmen was an incredibly easy weapon to manufacture. So they often gave it to the least trained troops uh, to defend their homes. And the earthy tones that I'm going to be using, I can end up uh, using these troops in, in any army that I want. Now we're going to be looking at beige brown. And this is going to be for his, his tunic, or jacket, or whatever you want to call it. And again, a lot of these colors uh, take the black very, very well. Um, so typically one, maybe two base coats. Again, you want to water down your paint um, so it flows nicely. Um, and also doesn't clump up on you. Um, and you get a nice, even, uh, thin coats on your miniature without losing any detail um, and if you notice uh, as I've been painting this miniature I'm kind of a sloppy painter uh, but I do clean up as I go and for people that are just getting into painting and a little, a little intimidated about painting these guys I, I, the biggest trick I've always learned is you want to be a clean painter first and then worry about things like highlighting and washing and shades and blending and all those details at a later time. Uh, if you can get the basics down um, perfectly, all that other stuff will only improve your paint jobs. So a lot of times I start with very simple paint palettes. You know, I pick a, a minimum amount of colors that are gonna look good together so I can get these miniatures out on the tabletop and they look like a force that came from the same state, nation, civilization, whatever the case may be. You know, of course, as you make mistakes, you can always clean them up as you go. And the nice thing is, is any areas that I've overpainted, I'm going to clean those up with the next color I'm working on, which we're going to see here in a moment, with using our flat red. In this case we're going to be painting some of the trim work. We have a nice little nice little band um, 
where the tunic comes together. And also we have some trim work on the cuffs. And there's also a hairband that again, I'll use red for, which goes back to the idea of keeping your palette small, your colors small. I typically like to use out of the pot colors, mainly because mixing can be problematic. And if you're not painting all your army at the same time, going back in and making sure that you get that right color combination can be a little tricky. So for again, new new painters out there, you know, I would stick to uh, pots of paint and there are so many manufacturers on the market now that you can find pretty much any any color that you want. Um, there's a good, a good good mix out there. You know, you'll see at the end of this video, I've enhanced these miniatures with additional highlights, which I didn't record. I apologize for that, but you will see me take this up to essentially the wash standard. Um, so it would be a base coat of all the different areas and a wash, and that'll definitely get you on the table. At a later time, I can always go back and show you uh, the highlight methods or I can use a different uh, miniature or unit um, to show you that. But I've had this video uh, sitting around on my shelf for a little while. Uh, just so I was trying out uh, some camera angles and lighting and thought uh, Miles will publish this and get some hobby videos going. So look good so far. So now we're going to be using Shadow Flesh. And essentially, I use this as a nice base coat for, for leather. It gives it a nice kind of reddish brown color, which I think is a, a good base coat um, if you want to take it up to like a red leather. Um, and it definitely uh, differentiates between the other browns that I've been using. And essentially, we're going to be using this for the belt and the uh, crossbow uh, bolt pouch that's hanging on his hip. Now we're going to be using khaki. and In this case, the khaki is going to be used for the crossbow itself uh, and any bolts um, that may be on the miniatures. There are a few of these repeating crossbowmen that are holding bolts uh, or are loading. So this is a nice light wood and it kind of brightens up the miniature compared to the, the darker browns that we've been using. The majority of the crossbow itself is going to be made out of wood. There's a few metal pieces that essentially are keeping the, uh, the wood together. But for the most part, these were manufactured out of wood. Uh, they had to be uh, easy to put together, easy, easy to assemble. And be able to ma be mass produced, and they functioned quite well. And it had a pump, basically a pump handle that put one bolt into the triggered mechanism, fired it, and essentially at the same time that you were uh, pulling the handle, it was releasing one bolt and loading the next one in. It's quite genius for the time. Now we're going to be doing some Iron Breaker. And this is a Games Workshop color. Um, I like the Games Workshop medals. I know uh, that would probably start a debate, but, but I like it. And there's a few areas that are touched up. There's a little pin in their hair and the little metal work on the crossbow itself. And once that's done, they're ready to be washed. So I use the Games Workshop Agrax Zerk Shade, and I think Games Workshop probably makes the best shades or washes out there in the marketplace. Army Painter does a pretty good job as well, um, but I've had really good success using Games Workshop's uh, shades, washes, and, and now even their contrast paints, which we'll see in other videos. 
this this begins to add all the depth uh, back to my miniature. I let that dry. And here is the finished product of all five different poses and the backs of the miniatures. And then finally a nice little unit of my repeating crossbow. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. You know, please like, subscribe, share it, and hopefully we'll see you soon with more videos. And if there's something out there that you want to see, be sure to drop a note in. Let me know. Thanks for watching.